Hello everyone, my name is Justin Woods and I'm one of the co-hosts of the Talking Roadmaps YouTube and podcast series. Here we get to talk to product people, expert practitioners and industry leaders and it's fair to say that my guest today is all three. Um, Hannah, I don't want to do a massive introduction of you because I know I'm going to make a mess of it. So why don't you give our listeners, if they don't know you already, a little bit of an intro to yourself. So my name's Hannah Chaplin. I work at Pendo. do a few different things here. I run the Sheffield site, which is really cool. I enjoy, enjoy doing that. It's a lovely place to work. I'm also a principal product marketer. So I work on Pendo for mobile, work on our feedback and roadmapping product as well. Um, and I also work really, really close with the the product team here. Um, so yeah, I do a bit of all sorts. And, and prior to that, um, I ended up at Pendo because the company I started got acquired, and that was a, a product feedback and road mapping, which is, I guess, why we're here, because I'm a bit of a road mapping nerd. Um, and then even further back, I've started uh, other software businesses as well. Um, so, yeah, I've done all sorts, but always on the product side. Since I was 18, I've always done software, always on the product side. That's amazing. And and it's it's clear to see your passion coming through for those as well. And I think once you've got them inside you, you never, you never really lose those. So I know it's going to be a pleasure to speak with you. I almost can't wait to get started. But um, before I ask you the first question, to the audience out there, absolutely welcome. Um, please do give us a like. If there's something that Hannah and I are saying as, as we go through today's series, if there's something that resonates with you, give it a like. Um, if you think that something we've said really resonates deeply and maybe you can share with a colleague, that's fantastic. And also, please, if you find value in today's session, uh, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel to grow uh, and reach more people as we get to speak to, to fab people such as Hannah. So, Hannah, let's. I'm going to ask you the first question, which is really kind of straight in there, which is, in your mind, what's, what's the purpose of a roadmap? Ooh, communication would be the one word, 100%. So I've always felt like a product roadmap is about keeping people aligned and like excited about where you're going. I think like where we're at with um, software, like software industry in particular, is like how our customers like want to know where you're taking the product. And I see more and more that when people are choosing software for their business, one thing they're really interested in is like, is my voice heard? Do I feel good about where the product's going? And I think a roadmap is a really nice way to do that. Do you just what do you think? I want to know what you think. I think it's difficult not to be biased from a lot of previous conversations as well. But for me, and I love that question back to me as well, I think it's it's a communication and an alignment tool. And I think also in a world where we have things like OKRs and objectives and goals, I feel that it provides some story and some narrative. Um, I find that, that the key results and 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 the objectives can can often be very clear. Um, but I don't know if they necessarily talk about a journey and whether they're as motivational. I think using those two together, I think is, would be my answer there. That's a good call out because the way I like to run things uh, is we've got like different types of roadmap, all that are like slightly different flavors. So we do have that internal roadmap that's more about alignment. So we have like top level items um, that are about like the business strategy and the OKRs. And it's like, here's, you know, like the swim lane thing. It's like, this is the initiative. Here's all the things that are building towards it to help like tell that story internally. But then we've got like a development roadmap, which we actually have in like Atlas in, you know, like in Jira. Um, Cause that's like really dull for anyone outside the development and product team to look at. Right. That's like literally tickets. it's like tickets and Kanban style. And we run sprints. Um, so it's kind of like a mini roadmap, right? It's all like two week map with the development team. Um, so we've got an internal one for like leadership and alignment, the development team two week sprint one. And then with customers, we have like a third style of roadmap, which is very much about here's what's just been delivered. Um, and this is what's coming up next. So we keep it more high level. So it's nice and flexible because in a big company like Pendo stuff changes and a lot of stuff changes out of your control. Whereas, you know, when you're smaller, like when I've started businesses and we've been growing, we've been a lot more transparent and more detailed with customers because I had more control. You've gone from receptive and, and obviously your, your previous companies as well to them being part of this 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 larger ecosystem. So potentially the, the importance of the roadmap and the audience has changed. Exactly. Yeah. Hence the need for like, that's why we have like different, different versions. What did you run different versions? Because I'm seeing product teams do that a lot now. And I think that 
works. Yeah, I think so. I think it's it's having and uh, I'm loving these the, the engagement actually back and, and asking me these questions. It's lovely. Um, I think I think it's important. Um, Phil and I, and, and certainly Phil has mentioned this in previous uh, episodes as well, is that it's about having a single version of the truth, but multiple views. I often talk about circles of trust. Um, when I'm using road mapping tools, I don't le- love to give everybody access to them where they can log in and see story points and comments or, or timings and things like that. I think it's it's too transparent. And so I think having consistency in terms of what you share, but different levels of detail. And I think that resonates perfectly with what you're saying. It's just these common things, but they're all, they've are all they almost got different tracks and cycles to them. Um, and that's really important. Exactly. The other question I was going to say, which was the audience of a roadmap. And I think you've perfectly summarized that there, which is, you know, there's, there's a, a number of different types um, and each of them have got uh, important things that they want to get out from it. Yeah, it is. Well, here's something I've started doing. I, I think more product team should do like for that communication piece, especially internally and back up to the business. We're not only showing what features align with initiatives. We've also got a swimming lane dedicated to like the go-to-market motion. Um, so we won't just have like, oh, this, 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 like, do you know what I mean? That's nice. Um, but alongside that, we'll run like, hey, this is the onboarding campaign we're going to run in app. This is when we're going to launch it to market. And here's the market, marketing activity. And it goes back to what you said at the start, just in that storytelling piece. It's like, you can put features out, but I always think of it as like, you know, if you're like an artist and you release a record, you've got to do all the promotion, you've got to do the touring, right? Otherwise, no one's going to listen to it. And I very much think your features are like that, right? You can put a feature out, but what are you doing as a product team in partnership with marketing to drive the success of that feature to meet those like company goals? Um, so we've started doing that a lot more as well, like tying the go-to-market with the features in a single roadmap to tell the story. That's massively important. You know, if, and like you said, it's these, if development are building these building blocks and, and product management isn't just about building things, you know, so that roadmap at that level needs to cater for, hey, we're going to make some process changes. We're going to make some documentation changes. And all of that is important. And I think, you know, you'll have seen this time and time again, as a small company, yes, we're going to be building a lot um, and we want to try and build f- for simplicity, but often you just need to build your, your product functionality up. But then as we start to mature that, it's it's really about simplicity, sometimes taking away features. You're not going to have that on a development roadmap necessarily unless there's some work to be done. So I think that's that's really important is keeping those roadmaps at a higher level um, so that it engages those right audiences. The other thing I've started doing a lot, more is um making sure we tie uh anything on the roadmap to data a lot better um so there's two ways i'm thinking about that one is like when something makes it to your roadmap um we'll look at like all the usage data around the product area that we're like developing um if it's something that exists and we're improving it of course if it's new you haven't got anything (laughs) um and then the second side it's like the quant side but then the qualitative as well um so on the roadmap we'll tie a customer feedback request directly into like the feature or initiative um, so again think about the story right if, if an exec uh, looks at a roadmap and sees that you've got two million of opportunities five million of customer ARR associated with this feature which ties up to this initiative that's a great story right it's like okay i understand why that's on your roadmap absolutely i wish people would do that more um you know providing that insight into the why and in fact i'm going to park that one just slightly and we'll come back to it because i think that's a great one to dive a little bit deeper into in terms of what you like to see on a roadmap that's lovely let's talk a little bit just about the peripheral so in your mind who owns a roadmap and maybe is that different to who maintains it for me it's always been the product manager owning and maintaining it because i just feel like the product person is at the center of like you're in the detail right i have we there's been instances where someone else has tried to update the roadmap like a scrum person or a program manager person and it just ends up with them having to go back to the product manager and i'm like well <laughs> it doesn't make any sense just get the product manager to do it to do it and you know i have a big believer that it's the product manager that has to own it because you're so accountable as a product manager that's the one asset i guess that everyone looks to the product team for what's your take on that what do other people do and what do you think i think there's definitely 
I've been in situations where I've not been an empowered product manager and I've been essentially more of a glorified delivery or project manager with a budget. And so sometimes, even though you own the roadmap, you don't necessarily influence exactly what's on it. And so you're told what's to put on it, which I think is a shame. But I'm so pleased in, you know, in the last five, 10 years, Hannah, we've seen massive moves away from from that and, and actually having somebody accountable because you can't own something you can't influence. And so telling somebody that they're a product manager and they own a roadmap, but then giving them a delivery plan that's not really fair. No, that doesn't kind of work, does it? So what about the relation of a roadmap to maybe vision, strategy? We also talked about objectives and, and OKRs at the beginning. In your mind, what's the relationship of the roadmap to those? Oh, I've always seen them to- together. And I think that comes from like from starting companies. You have to, like just in my own head, I've always understood what we're doing and why. And then obviously your product development has to line up to that. So... I think every product team needs to think about which part of the business strategy, like each feature is um, kind of having an impact on. The kind of see product management, you've got to please, like you've got to add value for customers, but you've got to ultimately add value to the business as well. And it's a little bit, you know, it's a balance that, right, sometimes. So, yeah, like they're so tied together. I, I can't even, I'm struggling to comprehend them not being a thing. <laughs> Because I've never thought about them any other way. And I, and I love that. I think they're intrinsically linked. And, and I've heard uh, somebody else mention that they are part of a constellation of other documents or artifacts that come together and support it. You know, it's it's in the middle. Um, Phil often says that it's a, a and, and describes it as a bridge between strategy and execution. And I agree with that as well. I think it's... Um, it's often misunderstood roadmaps, so we can maybe talk about that a bit later. But I think that I think they're really important as a storytelling. I don't think they're the be all and end all. I've seen many people trip themselves up with roadmaps, creating a well-meaning twelve-month delivery plan, and then being surprised. So I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, but I, I, I totally agree with you, and I can't imagine a, a world without roadmaps because I think. But it's just one small part that describes and fits in with other systems. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to think of it. Okay, so we talked about the, the metrics, and I want to dig into that a little bit more. So what what do you believe are some of the key elements or content of a roadmap? Ooh, okay. Which which one? Which type of roadmap? Hannah, I'm going to give you the luxury of just picking an example, actually. So just think of, think of a roadmap. Maybe describe the roadmap, what its purpose is, and then what you like to see on that, those key elements. Okay, I'm going to go with the one we use the most, which is the like internal roadmap where we're communicating back to the business what we're building and why. So I really like to see um, uh, that tie up to initiatives like the business initiative or even um, a metric. If it's like a particular metric that you're going to drive, if you can put like a hard number against an initiative, that's really, really helpful. Um, and then I'd have the features. I use feature loose. I know product managers can be a bit funny about like prop- it's a problem space. <laughs> like it's just words, isn't it? Like never. Um, I'll say features for now. Like feature or problem space. I think what actually Hannah to help you out. You did mention around a development and things like that, and I think that's absolutely okay when you're looking at the short term. You know, you're looking at the next two to three months. The development, when there is development going on, the feature space is fine. You know, we shouldn't frown upon it and say everything's so high level. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. So definitely how, like, what you're building align, lines up to those uh, initiatives. But I think, like you said there, Justin, we have, like, features in the nearer term, but then we'll have, like, problems that we're exploring kind of, like, over here somewhere because um, there's lots of different things to think about all the, all the time. Um, and then we make a really good point of making sure that we align the data with those features as well. So we, like I mentioned before, we look at product usage data and how feedback ties in to help like, tell, tell that story. Um, I don't, I'm quite flexible on, I know there's a lot of people have opinions about like the timeline. Some people like Kanban, some people want months, some people want quarters. And I think this is such like a, this isn't a cop-out answer, honestly. I think that depends a lot on the company the product the audience who the roadmap's for um so i don't have like a set you know set set time for for things like that because we have different ones on different roadmaps so it depends on the audience i mean to 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 go back and i love that answer so it does depend because it does depend but i i think the thing is to 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 help us out here and reinforce what we're saying 
the, the, the roadmap is a communication and alignment tool. So if it's not communicating and aligning, it's not doing its job. And so I think it does depend. It depends on your audience. It depends on what you're trying to communicate because the roadmap really is about them. It's about bringing them on the journey with you. You've got other versions of the roadmap, but that's the version that they're seeing. And so it needs to be empowering. It needs to, you know, often development teams are so in, in the weeds of the, the day by day that they might not see that we've got a six month overarching initiative that we're working on. That sort of stuff helps them out. I, in, in my tooling journeys, I often get, you know, the, the, Jira, the teams in, in Jira or Azure, they don't see that visibility of what they're connecting into. And so I think that's really important. It is. And that's like a, something we're really conscious of doing as like a product team is making sure the engineers know the bigger picture. You know, that like you said, their day to day, like on the tickets, in the weeds, in the code. Um, so we've like to help with that as well outside the roadmap. We've done like a first first half of the year sort of plan. Um, just so people know like what what the big objectives are that we're driving to and that gives them a lot of motivation um because they can see what they're doing day to day and, and, and like how it impacts you've got to bring them along the journey with you um they work really hard it's it's nice to show them what they're working hard towards and i think uh it's you can give that context like just day to day like if anyone runs like more of a scrum process has like a daily stand-up or at least like a regular meeting with engineers like whenever we're doing planning for what's next I'll always just pull the context in. It's like, oh, this is for this because we're doing that. And that's why. And it's just little things. It's literally two sentences in a meeting. Um, so I think it's really important as a product manager to always like tie engineering back to, to what you're doing. Love that. There's, a, there's an example that I'm going to completely butcher now. So forgive me, audience, and forgive me, Hannah. But it was, it was talking about the people that clean the toilets and bathrooms at NASA and actually giving them a purpose of you're helping putting man on the moon because you are, you know, keeping the bathroom sanitary. You're helping, therefore, the scientists to have a more comfortable environment so that they can do their best work. And it's tying that up to, you know, giving the, the people, the, the janitors and things like that, that clear sense of purpose that you are absolutely directly contributing towards helping put man on the moon is massively empowering, even though that might be the most glorified job that you could be doing. Exactly. You've got to see the bigger picture. It's exciting when you know what, what it's for, what your day-to-day -day is for, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And so do you have a preferred way to visualise or maybe style your roadmap then? So we mentioned some metrics and things like that come that, which I absolutely love, by the way. I think that's really motivating and, and transparent. But do you like to visualise it in a certain way? I don't want to be like, pendo, 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 because I don't like being like that. But... I'm in a bit of an odd position because Pendo has a roadmapping product and we're, we've totally rebuilt it. And as part of rebuilding it, I didn't want to just be like, oh, we've done the same thing again. It's just a roadmap tool. I wanted to think differently about what the modern roadmap looks like. So as we've been building it out, we've been tying in like the data piece and the initiative piece, especially the data bit. Um, and so there's other, yeah, there's things I'm thinking about Um in terms of visualization that really like tell tell that story better with data at the heart of it um so we've got to the place where you can tie like customer feedback to like your initiatives and your features and it all rolls up to like hey this had a thousand votes and this much AOR or whatever but the next step i'd like to do with it is to tie um tie off like what what happens after you've launched something like to me a roadmap is a bit of a beginning um and a product manager's job is like more end to end from like discovery to releasing something to driving adoption to sunsetting stuff. It's like an end to end thing. And I don't think product uh, roadmaps today generally do a good job of telling you the next part of the story. Totally. They, they stop at they stop at deployed. Yeah. And it's like, but, but that's only half of it, you know, really. Yeah. So I'm very much thinking about that piece that alignment and storytelling and communication piece back out to the business especially of like what happens next you release something did it work like was it adopted what was the usage data who adopted it so i'm starting to think about building that out next in our roadmapping tool um so that you can tie the launch to how it was used who it was used to drive uh, you know adoption metrics so again you can close the loop with the business and be like hey we invested in this to drive this initiative this is this was the ROI and just closing the loop properly in a roadmap and that's where I see roadmaps going it's like more data driven more storytelling and also 
closing the loop better. I think I think you you mentioned it. It's a phrase that I've heard uh, as well around modern road mapping. You know, it, it needs to happen. We need to we need to evolve from from that. Um, and I think you know pushing forwards as to what road mapping may look like uh, in the future, how we might have better definitions about what it's for and what it's not for, how to use it well, how to avoid using it, which of course is everything that this channel is about. Um, and we need people like yourselves, you know, with this experience as an entrepreneur and as a, as a product leader to really be curious and think about these things and go, well, what, what works well? And it might be that we end up moving on to a completely different type of tool as well. That's completely fine. I think roadmap has such negative connotations sometimes because it just, you, you look it up on Google and, and see what it looks like. And it looks like lots of different things that have got people into trouble in the past. I think we need, we need either need a better definition or we need to change its name. And I don't think we're ever going to change its name. So we need to be able to help people to work out what it should be. That resonated with you, didn't it? I was just thinking, what would you call it? I was like, ooh. <laughs> it, might be a, a, it might be a landscape, you know, because if you think about ourselves as, yeah, product explorers, right? We, don't, we know some stuff and we don't know other things. So why say that we've got a roadmap knowing we know how to get there? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's a good way of thinking of it. Yeah, so maybe maybe that's what we need. I'm not sure, but to have people like yourself developing these things at, at Pendo, being curious, stepping into the shoes of product managers, which is obviously something that's impossible for you to step out of, really. Um, you know, we're really grateful. So I'm excited to see innovations in this space. Yeah, me too. I just thought the one. Can I tell you about another one? Of course you can. The other thing I like to do with Romance on the customer more on the customer facing side. I'd like to make roadmaps more interactive for customers. Um, Cause like I said at the beginning, like more and more customers want to know where you're going as a company, it gives them confidence. And that helps things like with things like managing customer feedback. Like if they're submitting feedback to you, cause you're not necessarily responding, uh, you're not necessarily gonna respond to every customer request that you get. But if customers can see where you're heading, that's really important to them. They can be like, oh, okay, they're not working on my thing this week or this month, but I really like the direction this product's going in. This is really cool. Um, so making the roadmap more interactive, things like uh, just allowing customers to see, you know, what's in discovery, for example, and being able to add like a comment or a vote or raise the hand to be part of like, um, you know, like a, a customer panel or a testing group, like, getting the customer involved really early on to help you make better product decisions and and help them like influence as well i love that i can see why you set up receptive hannah it doesn't have to be us and them it should you know some of the best companies out there is doing it together you don't just get what you're given let's go and work on some stuff together and and i think that's a lovely way of working you know your your customers can be some of your your greatest learning points they can be some of your greatest advocates why not invite them along that journey and or them them be so uh, bold as to assume that they know what they want. At the end of the day, they're the ones, the reason you've got a job, right? And they're the reason the company's there because they're paying you for a service. So I've always thought the customer is like so important. Um, and I've never felt that meant I have to build everything a customer's asking for because that's not, not right either. But you've got to consult with them, tell them what you're thinking of building, get their, you know, buy-in early on. Um Otherwise, you just end up building a mess. If you always did what your customer wanted, you might deviate away from what is truly important to your company. Exactly, exactly. So I think there's an opportunity there for product managers to like have an opinion on, obviously have an opinion on what you're building, why, and align that with the company strategy and goals, whatever, but make sure you are consulting the customer. It's very different to like, hey, customers, tell me what to build. I'll go do it. Different different things right yeah for sure and i think that's picked up on, on on actually beautifully into the next question which is around best practices in road mapping and so i think that's a great way bring customers and it doesn't have to be your 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 paying customers that your customers can be your stakeholders internally bring them along that journey is a great best practice is there another best practice that you might add to that though think about your audience so a lot of this we cover but this is a good summary point i like it so think about your audience and don't be afraid to have like different versions. So as a recap, we've got like a customer version of the roadmap, which is very high level, what we're building, like what's coming up next, what we've just released, high level stuff, that internal version with initiatives, very data driven about storytelling, and then that 
um, like two weekly kind of like sprint roadmap with with different mum. And that's not a lot of work to maintain actually at all. Like the cooking ones, like once a quarter. Um, the like visionary type internal alignment one. It's not a lot of work. We update it as we go, and then we do the sprint planning with the team anyway. So it can sound like a lot, but it really isn't. Bring data to your roadmap. Really important that you're backing those roadmap decisions up with data uh, to help with alignment and explaining. Um, put other things outside of feature development on your roadmap, like the go-to-market side, is really helpful. Yeah, I think they're I think they're the big ones. Absolutely, I, I, I love that one around the the other departments of things. I think if we had an audience here, Hannah, they'd be giving you some applause right now. I'll probably have to get a little applause button for future videos, but. Absolutely. I think that's I think that's really important. What about um, <clears throat> some of the biggest mistakes you maybe see people have done in road mapping? When you say people, do you mean me? It doesn't have to be self-incriminating. And you can say that, you know, you have a friend who, if you wish to. Oh, my gosh. So go back in time. I think like people used to do a lot of like Gantt chart style. There's a weird lap over, wasn't there? Project management and product management for a while. Do you remember that? I do. And, and there still is between what we might call release managers and product managers and, and how they're kind of intrinsically linked. One of them is probably around the when and the other one is around the what. And you can't do the what without the when or the when without the what. So they're kind of both in the same box. But I do remember it well. And it's still a, it's still a thing. And I think during that transition, there was a phase where we were being pushed to still do like the more project management style, Gantt chart style, you know, a little coloured sausage thing. Um, and after a while, especially when SAS became a thing, that just didn't work. So I'd be very conscious of like timings and things and making sure you're not putting like hard dates where you don't need them and all that sort of thing. I've seen that go wrong a lot of time. Um, what other stuff? Oh, touching a, a bit again on, um, you know, the customer feedback side, this tripped me up in my first SaaS business where we landed uh, like a huge customer and we were like, yay, an enterprise customer. Yay. It's dead exciting. And really, looking back, that product was more for like small and medium sized businesses. But we started like building more and more bespoke stuff for this like big whale customer. That's not a good thing to do, everybody. That made me sad because you end up building all this bespoke stuff. And it's like, well, this isn't a SaaS product. We're just a software house or something. Um, I've seen other people do that. And I'm very conscious of it now. If we've got a big customer asking for stuff, I like have a think and be like oh does this align with what other customers are asking for does it align with what the target customer needs does it align with what the business wants us to do and I've got a lot more comfortable at like pushing back on those things and saying no um, but that's a bit of a hard lesson isn't it like saying no especially to big customers it's massively difficult it, it reminds me of um yes so many things that I could bring in here but Daniel L is Audi talking about that the B2B innovators map and that your roadmap should maybe be your first 10 customers before you can even think about product market fit and what you're trying to do there. So I think there has to be a level of tailoring, but with SaaS, you, you need to account for the many and, 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 and build for the many. And so it's, it's tempting to go down that route, but it's, there's, there's, it depends, right? There's a balance. Um, you, you have to get some revenue in. And so building what people need is important. But maybe it could also be around Teresa Torres's thing, which is the opportunity solutions tree. If your customers are coming to you with some solutions of what they want to build, maybe it's teasing behind that and looking at the wider opportunity that may actually be needed by others. Yeah. So like, that's a good point. Like the second time around, I had that uh, situation in a different business. It was very much about, okay, which, you know, does this align? What can we build here? Or how, how can we... Uh, create something that more people can use that also solves your use case. So I started thinking about it a little bit differently. I think one of the biggest ones that have tripped me up. Um, what what's the? I need to ask this now. What's the what's the one thing that you've done where you were like, oh, I've learned from that. I tell you, this is this is. I think hopefully the the audience can can relate and you can relate. But I think the first one was was my first product management. In fact, it was my second product management job. Uh, the first one was was when I was at Dell and looked after the basket basket pages for ecom. 
I was kind of largely given the roadmap because it was I was more of regional extensions of a global code base. But I think when I went into this other company and I was it was a bit more carte blanche, I think I sat in a room in isolation and created much more of a long reaching, <clears throat> excuse me, roadmap on my own. And and because I just thought I know best, so I'm going to create it on my own. And I think that was the biggest mistake. You, it's not that you don't run it past other people as well, but I just made some fundamental mistakes of just doing it in isolation, making it too specific and making it too long term, um, because I didn't really understand what a roadmap was properly at that time. It's funny you said making it too long term. I think my tendency is uh, being the other way. I'll be like, oh, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I just feel like, oh, we'll work it out. It's fine. We don't need to plan that far ahead. So I'm like always the person pushing against like longer term. But I think the key word you've said a few times is like it depends and balance as well. Well, when you're a founder, <clears throat> the um, the roadmap can be in your head. You know, I, I'm running Roadmap Heroes at the moment. You've been a, a serial entrepreneur and created different companies in the past. Um, and so, you know, when when it's just when you're just on your own at those times, your your roadmap is or your ability to do your analysis on what's right or wrong to build is is in your head because you're doing all of that linkage on what aligns to strategy and just that gut feeling. Whereas as you start to expand, that doesn't become the case. No, you're quite right. And there's like, I think when you're early stage, you're in a very, very special and different position because like thinking about when I was starting companies, you're doing products, you're doing marketing, you're doing content, you're doing all of the sales, you're supporting the customers. So really you're connected to absolutely everything. So the roadmap is obvious. It's like laughably obvious because you're in the middle of it every day. But then in company lands, you've got, 500 sellers you've got 600 cs people and you've got like a board and all of that information you used to be so close to is suddenly you have to work hard to, harder to get it it's just different right it is and i think that goes back to what we were saying about the communication the alignment is really the the, the we, when you're in a smaller team or on, or on your own, that's in your head. So the alignment is 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 obvious. It's intrinsic to what you're doing. Um, but when you are working with other teams, you, the, the roadmap is your explicit rec, uh, representation of that. And so that's why it does that communication alignment. So, what about any bad practices or anti patterns you may see? Planning too far ahead is a big one for me. Definitely, like planning too far ahead nightmare um i think the other thing you have to be careful of again for bigger companies as well along with that planning too far ahead is like communicating things too early on i've learned we have to be really careful about communicating to our customer facing teams closer to when something's shipping rather than in the older days it was a bit more further out um so i think yeah announcing stuff to customers and customer facing teams too early um, that's not helpful either. I see people doing that a lot. Yeah, in, in, the, in your best endeavours of being transparent, um, you're maybe changing it too often um, or, or you're just, it's that confidence level, I, I think, and it's just there's the right time to share something and it needs to have a certain level of maturity or stability or confidence before you're ready to do it. And so too early can be a problem and too late maybe can be a problem too. You pitch it right haven't you you can give the longer term strategy and stuff without being like we're going to do this next week exactly and do you do you have a pet hate on the roadmap something you just really don't want to see on there not necessarily something i don't see on there but it really winds me up when uh this isn't any particular company by the way this is just random people over time where someone swans in and they're just like oh why are you doing this or like i don't want to do that though no, i want to do this it's like oh like people who don't take the time to ask, ask the product team first why it's, you know, why something's there, why you're building a kind of particular thing. So I always like, if I'm looking at a roadmap or something, I always come from a place of, okay, this is on there for a reason. I'm going to go and like dig a little bit and, and learn about why and have a discussion rather than what's this doing? I know, I know people want to come in and, and, and make their mark and, and make a change and often <laughs> the, the seagull manager that you described they fly in they crap all over the place and they fly off again it's 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 almost actually like um someone said it, it was simon simon Whitkiss was on the channel previously um 
And, and he said it, the roadmap can serve as corporate record. And I loved that because actually it can show a history of things that we've done previously and coming into your kind of thoughts around roadmaps of some of the benefits that they've realized over time. Wouldn't it be lovely to actually say to that person, love what you're saying, but actually we visited this two years ago and it wasn't successful because of X, Y, Z. We didn't actually achieve these benefits. And so do we really want to go through that cycle again or should we attempt it in, in a different way? That's really powerful. Yeah, which comes back to why it's so important, I think, to when you're producing that internal roadmap, mapping it to the strategy and having data to back you up just makes those discussions go a lot easier. It's not just opinion versus opinion. You know, it's like, well, that's hard, right? In some environments, other product people have spoken to, it takes a lot of confidence sometimes as a product manager to, to you know, step up and have those conversations, especially when it's someone higher level or higher up in the company. It's it's difficult but that's why like say data and, and that sort of thing can really help absolutely love that and i want to learn a little bit more about where you get some of your inspiration and ideas from so is, is there anyone whose advice on road mapping you listen to no <laughs> genuinely no i think there's nothing like just cracking on with stuff like i think like you have your best ideas, your best inspiration, talking to customers and actually using your own product. But like your product doesn't have to be something used in your job. You could be like, I don't know, uh, some, you know, something totally different, totally different space to what you do. But I think very often people talk about their product and roadmaps without actually be using their own product. And I think you learn an awful lot um, from staying close to customers and actually using your own software. That helps a lot. Eat, eat your own dog food and talk to the people that are, are, are actually using it. I mean, I think that's a that's something that product managers don't do enough of, and um, possibly because they're more delivery managers. But please, people out there, speak to your customers. Um, that, that's the most important thing because they're the people that are paying your, keeping your company going, paying your wages, and they're the people that you need to keep happy. Yeah, and I think the thing I see a lot in a similar vein is like people will talk all day long about they'll sit on meetings designing a feature or whatever i think it's really important just get your screen up get the product and like just show people or get people to go away and like click about in it themselves and again it really brings it home i think that's what drives the inspiration when you're close to customers when you're using it when you're taking everything back to the actual product that's what where the inspiration comes from i think absolutely yeah i love that um, and are there any road mapping resources um, or that you typically use or recommend? Again, it's probably just the product people around me. Like we talk about stuff, like we figure out what the business needs, what our customers need, and we react to that rather than looking outside. Um, I know some people like, like it's great to go and read up on stuff, but there's nothing like figuring it out, I don't think. That's just what I'm very practical. I'm not much of a like reader in that in that respect but i love that because a template is not going to tell you what your internal stakeholders want to hear you, the only way that you're going to work that out is to speak to them and and again we just need to be doing much more of that a, a template or a tool even it, it might not be the silver bullet um it might help you to expedite a process but really you need to go and have those conversations yeah and i think uh, every set of customers every product every business is different and what's right for your roadmap is probably wrong for someone else you know so I think being conscious of who you need to work with day to day and reacting to that rather than what you've read or what's on the internet is I think that's a really cool way to work and a, and a, and a quick question on tooling so it could be um, in, interesting to hear your thoughts on this but do you do you have a, a, a particular tool that you like to use or, or would recommend well this is this is like I said earlier this is a bit horrible because we just use Pendo right we use our own uh, road back tool um, which obviously we're developing and we make sure all the other product managers are using it as well and we're very in a very special position that we were able to do that at Pendo um, so we can work with the other product teams here to help develop it out as well as uh, customers but there's loads right just tons of them in there explore them find what works i think the, the biggest bit i'd say to the audience is first of all be clear on your own internal processes and what works for you and then find a tool that fits that exactly yeah totally agree there's lots and lots of choice out there awesome so we're coming up to the end of today's session i'm going to ask you a question that can often be the 
a bit more of the most difficult one, but I don't want to get you too worried. What would your philosophy of road mapping be in one or two sentences? Do what works for you. That's it, though. Do what works for you. But I'd, I'd frame it with, like, the things we've talked about, right? Do what works for you, but be conscious of what uh, the company needs, what that strategy is. Back your roadmap up with data and make sure you're telling that, that story. I think if you're doing those things, you're not going to go too far wrong, right? Product management. Product manageize your own road mapping process. Ooh. Hey, that's a strong, strong ending quote, that. Hannah, before we let you go, I'd love to give you a chance just to, to share with our audience um, if this really resonated with, with them um, on, on the things that you offer, the things that you're working on. Um, maybe, maybe just pitch yourself a little bit. Sure. Yeah. So I guess if you're a product team that um, that's growing and likes to be very like data informed, um, I would definitely, you know, go and have a look at Pendo for sure. It lets you like understand what your users are doing. You can guide them in app, you can collect feedback and you can communicate everything back with, with like a product roadmap. So yeah, go and go and check Pendo out. You can start for free on it as well. So it's worth uh, worth having a lot of thank you hannah so much for for sharing that with us and um, we're going to put links down uh, in the youtube video uh, if you're listening on the podcast please go to the youtube um, videos or, or go to our website and we'll share those on there but you know we're really keen to celebrate a lot of different tools because behind those tools are great people such as yourself hannah so thank you for all of the work that you're doing um and yeah I just want to say a massive thank you for spending time with us. It's been an absolute joy speaking with you today. Um, is there anything else I should have asked you that maybe I didn't? Oh, I think I think that's a lot for a Monday morning, Justin. <laughs> no, it's been really fun. It's been really fun. Thank you very much for, uh, for having me. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. So, folks, if you've enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed listening to Hannah's words of wisdom there, please give us a like so that other people can find this. I think there's so many little bits of wisdom that you shared with us. So, folks, please go and share this out with someone that you think may need to hear it as well. And if you found value, consider subscribing as well. That would really help us out. If you'd like to be where Hannah is today, reach out to us. We'd love to schedule a session with you where you can share your thoughts. Otherwise, that just leaves me to say, Hannah, thank you so much. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you.